So are you, um, you've got like one that's compatible with Arduino or mm -hmm. the, and you've got the Pi Cap as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, do you have any plans for the BeagleBoom? So that is a good question. Mm -hmm. um, we do, so we have yeah, an Arduino based product and we have a Pi based product mm -hmm. and both of those have come out of a direct response to the community. So, right. you know, when we started, we were just selling the jar mm -hmm. and within a week, Somebody was begging us to connect it to the Arduino, which yeah. you know, we were not surprised at that, that <laughs> happened. Um, and so we developed a touch board because it was we realized that doing a shield had presented all sorts of problems. So we said, uh -huh. let's make a, you know our own board based around an Arduino. Right. The Pi Cap is a board that's designed for the Pi. It uses the same sensing suite as the touch board, mm -hmm. but obviously it. it you know, it's it's just the sensors, right? So the yeah. Pi is controlling it. So um, you stick it on. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's a hat for the Pi. So it's not a standalone object. Mm. Um, the, the BeagleBone question is really interesting. Um, because we have not had many requests from our community to do that. Yeah. So well, to me, this is like a really compelling business question. When you're running a business that's growing organically, how do you know what the next thing to do is? Yeah. So Pi Cap was obvious because people wouldn't stop emailing us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you connect my Raspberry Pi to my tube of electric paint? Mm -hmm. And we thought, okay, we, should, we, we know how you could do it. Why don't we just do it for people? Yeah. What we found is that there are lots of people using the Beagle Bone with the paint, but they tend to be like super pro users. Yeah. And they're really sophisticated. And it hasn't yet, it doesn't feel like any of them need um, a, a help up. Hmm. Right, they're like just running with it, right? Um, and so it hasn't yet necessitated a separate product, hmm. but we're like not adverse to it. And I feel like maybe at the same time, beagle bones tend to be more just like tend generally to be yeah. more used for like robots and stuff. Yeah, and probably you're not going to be chasing your robot around like touching it or like your drone, you know, that's kind of the yeah. opposite of what you want to be doing. And it's like, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can have it, you know, it could be spraying paint. <laughs> I'll tell oh, you what, whoa. you could definitely win a robot war, and I, well, I, will, <laughs> I will send a, a bunch of free product to anybody <laughs> who successfully uses liquid electric paint to disable a robot in a one-on-one -on -one battle. That is a great, because, okay, I've, this, I've been in a couple of robot battles, and they've yeah. expressly forbidden me from using water, because I was like, I'll just put a squirt gun on it. They're like, no, yeah, yeah, no totally. fire, no it water. It's pretty it's dirty. Like, that's yeah. totally Because a... let me say, as a <laughs> pro tip, as somebody who this has happened to before, if you spill a bunch of electric paint oh. onto a microcontroller, oh. it, does, it doesn't work after that. It doesn't work. And yeah. so, yeah. But I think that you're right that, like, beagle bones maybe are used in, um, typically are used in environments which doesn't really require paint. Hmm. So, uh, you know, what, you know, Arduinos, to me... do, like, line following, I guess. Something. Yeah, you could do line following. Um, and we get asked that question a lot. The but problem is that there's not really a technically an advantage to having to measuring the resistance of the line rather than just looking at a black line. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, like when people say who don't know anything about Arduino or Pi or BeagleBone, ask what these devices are. What I usually say is that Arduinos are about connecting inputs and outputs in the physical world. Mm. Right. It's like you, um, you know, you you want a button that launches a rocket. An Arduino is a great thing to do that, yeah. right? Uh, and you can change the relationship between the button and the launcher uh, when it's in software or in code. Mm -hmm. But the, the Pi is much more about software in general, but has evolved to become more about the physical, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why it took us so long to respond to the Pi, mm. because initially it was about like media centers and really like detailed yeah, software development. Yeah, it's like developed as a way to learn uh, yeah, software. Exactly. Yeah. And so now that the Pi has become more physical, at Robot Wars last weekend, there were tons of people using, or not Robot Wars, at Pi, Pi Wars, Wars, thank you. Uh, <laughs> there were tons of people using um, Pis to control physical stuff uh -huh. that could necessitate the paint. I I'm would curious. watch the Beagle Bone to see if that happens, uh -huh. if there's another evolution for it. Yeah. Yeah, so speaking of Pi Wars, what did yeah. you see people, like, presumably you went there because yeah. so many people were using it. Yeah, I mean, we went there because, I think, well, we went there for a few reasons. One, we just wanted to see it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. And actually, Understandable. The, um, we definitely are going to build the robot next year because there were two of us who went. And um, we spent the whole time 
critiquing other people's robots. <laughs> like, that's a good idea. We could use that. You're yes, going to make the yes, prettiest yes. robot ever. We're going to make gonna a be, cool robot. It's going to be so good looking. Um, I thought Pi Wars was an awesome event. Uh -huh. It was like, I haven't been to an event that was so optimistic in quite a while. People hmm. were just so pumped. And I think what was nice about it is that everyone there was participating somehow. Mm -hmm. So there was no, um, as far as I could tell, there was no one who was just attending, hmm. right? Everyone was part of a robot team or was a vendor who was supplying robot parts or was there to help judge or run the event. Or and, was plotting for next year. Or was plotting for next year, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but I think that made it a really great event. I think technically there was some really cool stuff hmm. and there was some a real, a really nice diversity of solutions um, and a really interesting mix of skills too. What were they trying to do? Was so there problem? were five, I think it was five different challenges. Uh -huh. um, and the, I'm not sure what the rules for the construction of the robot was, but uh, each robot got graded on its five different challenges. So I believe that there's like an overall winner um, and then there's a winner for each challenge. Cool. And the challenges were things like, um, one was called Pi Noon, uh, like Old West. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like a and you had, well, but it was quite cool. You had like balloons attached to the robot. So this was manual control. And so each robot would have a needle on a stick. <laughs> and so you have to pop, I think each one got three balloons. And, and you so lose you, points, presumably, yeah. if you run the needle into the opposite driver. Yeah, you know what? I had. I don't know if anyone tried that technique. They definitely <laughs> could have. Hopefully they have some kind of barrier. But then there was like an autonomous maze challenge. Uh -huh. um, and then there was a... Um, uh, there was like an optical course challenge. There was a line following challenge. Mm -hmm. um, there was a challenge where you had to push this very slippery large ball around in a in an arena and deposit it in different locations. <laughs> but what I really liked about it was that there slippery. were there was this great uh, robot in the autonomous maze that oh, was just uncanny. Huh. It was like to watch the guy run it. And I think you know on average I was judging that on average maybe people took about. 50 seconds yeah and his was doing it at 15 whoa it was crazy it was amazing to watch it but amazing it was amazing <laughs> it was great but then i i mentioned to steph who was there with me i said wow that robot was incredible and he said yeah well yesterday when i was judging skittles it was terrible because it was so small that it kept getting run over by the ball it was oh. trying to push because it would push the ball and then the ball would bounce back <laughs> Loved the event because they had that. Yeah, it showed that um, that that you know robotics engineering in general is just full of compromises. Yeah, and I like when people say, uh, you know what, I'm going to optimize just for yeah. the maze challenge and do it so fast. And so I, I you know, it just it, it gave yeah. me goosebumps. It was so cool to see it, everybody being so excited and so successful. And there were a few robots during the maze challenge that just decided they didn't want to do the maze and they exited the maze. Uh -huh. was, there was a tank. It was amazing. There was a little tracked uh, robot that just didn't turn. It just went straight. And it just went over. It climbed up over the edge of the maze and took off. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's hard not to anthropomorph anthropomorphize and think yeah. that that robot was like, you know what? I don't have to do this. No, oh, yeah. You press you you press the autonomous mode and I'm out. Like honestly, like, do we really think there's gonna be a robot uprising or are they just gonna be like, no, screw this, we're gonna go like hang out together? Yeah, he, totally. He, he was he, he was out about killing humans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally happy to just I think he was just off to explore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all about curiosity. Yeah, right? yeah, totally. Yeah.